More on the news of a potential COVID-19 vaccine this morning. Joined now by the chair of the UK Vaccine Task Force, Kate Bingham. Hello to you, Ms Bingham. Thanks very much indeed for joining us on the programme this morning. This sounds exciting. It is really cool. Good morning. Tell me, tell me more about it. it. You know, it all sounds like good news. We have to temper our enthusiasm or should we just all get the streamers out? Now, we have to be very cautious because there has never been a vaccine against a coronavirus and there may never be one. What we have been tasked to do is to protect the UK population uh, against COVID-19 through vaccination and do so as quickly as we can. And the announcements this morning show that the UK is absolutely at the forefront of global efforts to source and develop vaccines from across the world, across a range of different technologies. Scary, isn't it, when you hear there might never be a vaccine against it? I don't think there's one against SARS, is there? No, and there's no vaccine against malaria, against HIV, and these are diseases we know well. So there is no expectation that this definitely can be done. But the early data that we're seeing is definitely encouraging. More trials in the works as well, isn't there? There's not just the one. Are they working collaboratively together? Yes, so there's 23 uh, vaccines in clinical trials around the world. Uh, there has been enormous collaboration and cooperation, uh, both from academia, from industry, from governments. It's incredibly impressive and people have been working at unprecedented speed. So it, it is an exciting time. And if you think about it, the virus was only identified at the beginning of the year, and we've now got 23 vaccines in trials. Oxford has vaccinated over 9,000 people with their, with their vaccine. So this is really quite remarkable. Are we obliged, obligated, I should say, to uh, share our information, to share our potential vaccines around the world? It's one of the goals of the Vaccine Task Force is both to find vaccines for the UK, but also to ensure that any successful vaccine is distributed um, across the globe so that anybody who is at risk of COVID infection is vaccinated. So we are not pursuing a strategy of vaccine nationalism. We are recognising that this is a global pandemic and we need to ensure that the globe and all those who need it are vaccinated. OK, so it's a breakthrough today. What happens next? The trials continue. So what we have announced today is that we've secured rights to two new vaccines in addition to the vaccines being developed by Oxford University and Imperial. And those vaccines will continue to progress through clinical trials. They have to show that they are both safe and they have to show that they are protective, either that they can reduce mortality or ideally and ultimately we want to show that they can protect people from even getting infected in the first place. And those trials basically will continue until we have a result. Mm. How worried are you about um, espionage, people um, trying to hack the systems to steal the work that you've done? Um, we've had uh, continuous uh, support from the cyber security uh, teams that uh, we have not been hacked. Uh, we're very alert to the fact that this is potentially happening. Um, but it's, I'm not concerned that uh, this is going to disrupt in any way what we're doing. So has it been, I mean, we've heard a lot about Russia trying to access uh, what we, what our brilliant scientists are doing. Are you, have you, you've obviously been made aware of that. Have you actually seen it firsthand, as it were? I haven't seen the hacking. I've, I've uh, had lots of conversations with the cyber security teams, yes. OK. Um, as you said, ne next steps mean that it's not yet a vaccine, but you are going to uh, take it further to see whether or not we could go for herd immunity in the fullness of time with, with this vaccine. But I was reading an article this morning uh, that suggested, Kate, that 25% of the population would not be interested in having a vaccine. That's presumably because they're anxious about potentially being given COVID-19 or whatever they're interpreting it as. What would you say to reassure my viewers this morning? So all I would suggest to the viewers sitting uh, at their coffee tables 
uh, having, having breakfast, is we are incredibly fortunate to be living in a world uh, in which diseases not that long ago were killing millions of children. So if you think about smallpox that has now been eradicated, polio and so on, if we can find vaccines that are safe and effective, the restrictions that we are currently facing will stop. We will return to normal. Vaccination has been a huge benefit to society and should continue to uh, do so.